I think the guag Tom got Kun Paw. Kun Paw just finished kind of rewatching the last two uh, of the lifelines that didn't work. And at the last minute, I got interrupted by Ken and consistent theme. It's okay. It's Sunday. It's his big day. It's fine. But um, one thing that's been a, ma made a lot of comfort uh, and helped me feel really good uh, with all this craziness here and dating and having a relationship here, which is really bonkers, uh, really. Um, is Fawn is a very conservative person from a very conservative family. And I've spent considerable time and effort verifying that for you know, my benefit, obviously. And I don't want to get screwed over again. Um, there are lots of reasons. I, I didn't enjoy it the last couple times, and I'm really not looking for another one. So, you know, thanks. Um, you know, a lady that... I mean, she can be a little, I mean, you could, you could say, you could, if I didn't demand to do some things from time to time, she'd be pretty content with a really boring life, like, like, what I would consider boring, what maybe some people would consider boring, obviously not boring for her. Uh, and in fairness to Fawn, she works a lot. And when she's not working, she's caring for me or our little apartment together and then doing stuff for her boys and helping friends. And she stays busy doing really good deeds. Um, I greatly su uh, suspect her friend Noy, Devo's wife, is exactly the same because you, you virtually never see Noy outside her little village. Um, and her living situation is the same as Fawn's. They all live in like six houses or so, all adjacent, literally adjacent to one another, not even a house over. So uh, those kind of girls, you're going to have... I think statistically, your odds for success skyrocket. Um, they don't drink alcohol. I've never seen Davo's wife drink alcohol. Uh, Fawn, on the tiniest, she'll have the tiniest bit. She did have a little more than the tiniest bit once. Um, she did. Um, she's, she asked my permission first to have alcohol, and I'll say, yeah, okay, it's fine, a little bit. And then... One time she was kind of sneaking it, and uh, the one friend was literally pouring it into her glass, and I looked over, and the friend it instantly stopped, and Fawn kind of looked down like a, like a kid that was in trouble. I'm like, Fawn, you know. I mean, I was there to protect her and watch over her. I guess it would have been okay, but she doesn't handle alcohol well. It's got a lot of sugar in it. She's diabetic, and uh, I don't know, just didn't seem like she really needed that. And she was already singing and dancing all over the place, so she was already having a ton of fun. Anyways, maybe I could have said yes to that. I don't know. But that isn't my point. You get the point. Conservative, traditional girl. You know, and, and it's the same old thing. You're going to see, you know, uncolored hair. Typically no tattoos. Not that tattoos are bad. I always say that. I got, look at Davo. Davo's covered in them. Oh, but does he get a lot of backlash in his village for that? Boy, they, they the, the village gossip is he's like some wild man, whatever, and he's maybe the most Jai D person on the planet. He's extremely considerate. He's a very considerate friend. He treats Noy's family like gold, and they just love him. And uh, he treats me like gold as a friend. Um, if I asked for anything, I know he'd do it. Um, so, you know, but, but he has tattoos and long hair, so, man, they really, the villagers just use that as ammo for gossip, I think. I, don't, I was about to say they don't accept that, but I think it's more just ammo for gossip. You know, Kun Paw's got that kite way up there. That's up pretty high. He's pretty good. It's a nice breeze off this hill. He's, he's good with a lot of stuff. Um, so if you can find a more traditional girl, and they are online. I mean, Fawn went online. I, I met her in Thai Friendly. Uh, and I always say don't do that. But I went through like 300 girls. I, I, I practically needed a damn spreadsheet to sort it. I had to start writing it down. Um, who was who and what was what and I was asking like kind of like deliberately kind of like tr questions kind of like to trap them up a little bit uh, women will regularly ask you if you drink alcohol or not and then so I just asked them oh yeah yeah I love it love it how about you yeah I do eh. you know I wanted a traditional lady and I, I would ask them do you mind if I do and the answer would come back pretty reluctantly like yeah it's okay as long as you're not drunk 
because uh, there's a lot of a lot of the wives here have had problems. The divorcees have had problems with their men and drinking really way too much, just being maybe alcoholics or not, but at the very least, very heavy drinkers. I mean, falling down drunk five nights a week, that to me is a problem. That's not what I'm into, so everybody can make their own choice. You guys are more than old enough to make your own choices. I'm not saying what to do. Anyway, so that kind of stuff. So even though I did it wrong, I kept my head about me in a couple of ways, and eventually I did get here, and I'm okay now, but... Holy crap, man, that's a rough ride. Uh, adapting over to the dating landscape in Thailand, that's a rough-ass ride. <laughs> oh, yeah. I was laughing at Ken. This, Ken's kite just keeps spiraling. It doesn't have enough tail, and I think it's upside down, personally, but I put it upside right, and Ken immediately put it the other way, so I'm like, okay, that's fine. You know, whatever. It's cool. I hear how to tell everyone how to put their kite together. But, uh, no, yeah. Yeah, we've talked about that before. I mean, just you know, the more traditional clothing, you know, ask them to send you photos. If you are going to find somebody online, which again, I don't think is a great idea, fine, but ask for some photos, um, see what they send you. That'd be a good one. Um, somebody else had a great catch that I wish I would have thought of. Um, God, I was just so stupid. Um, but when you go online, look at their, their profile, their dating profile, it'll say almost all the, the Thai type dating sites say like what age range the lady wants. And if it's an age range of like, they want a man 18 to 80, really, really? They want a man's wallet when it's 18 to 80. It should be a very narrow range. This should be a woman who's 40 looking for a guy 45 to 55 or, you know, whatever, up to 60. It'll, they'll usually the age range for a woman looking for a man will usually start around her age or if they're really being honest, it'll be it'll start like five years younger. It is is definitely more common to see different age ranges here. I'm my sexist biases. I'm always looking at the man being older and the woman being younger and hotter and all that. But I see it the other way around here, ten times more often than I did back in the states. And I see big age ranges the way I'm thinking ten times more than in the States. And those two factors tend to balance each other out a little bit statistically, because if you go online and look up Thailand and age ranges for marriage, it's all over the place, but there's somewhere between a, a three and eight year age difference on average, depending on which website you believe. Oh, gang mark, Ken, gang mark. Oh, and, uh, but I think that that's just the average of there's so much one way or the other, because there is a necessary pragmatism here because they're poor. And so if they can find a decent person, they're less willing to regard age because they found someone who's like not an alcoholic and has a freaking job or is not an alcoholic and will actually clean the house and do the laundry. And yeah, that was a sexist comment and I'm not going to apologize for it. So you get the idea, you know, and obviously the man can do the laundry and all that. I really don't care. So just some thoughts there. I kind of, this is going to be, I'm going to give this a different name, but it, this is going to be the unofficial part three of the, uh, like two lifelines that didn't work because the, uh, the one life, couple things, not lifelines, but a couple of the little things that did work is just some of the stuff here. So, you know, the, watching the alcohol intake and the clothing and the photos they send you. Yeah, if they send you bikini shots and stuff, they're sending those to everybody. Is that who you want for your wife? You know, uh, a fun wouldn't do that. Um, I didn't specifically say, hey, baby, you know, show me uh, show me something. Um, but, I, but I asked for photos, and I, and I always got respectful, nice photos. I didn't say one way or the other. I wasn't really even thinking about that. Honestly, that was kind of weird. Anyways, um, she sent respectful photos. In fact, I've got a good joke. Uh, the photo she used on Thai Friendly was a very nice photo of her uh, with some friends. It's eight, it was eight years old at the time. And then the first photo she sent me that she, like, snapped a snapshot and sent me was probably the worst photo she's taken since I've known her. And I remember looking at it and going, oh, no. Oh. Well, she seems like a nice person, though. And it was not, not an attractive photo. And I have the photo, and we'll have to do a, uh, maybe, I'll throw, uh, maybe I'll throw it in. It is kind of funny, because she is a rather attractive lady. And my God, in some of the photos, she's just stunning. I mean... She can be like any woman, you know, any woman. It's makeup, hair, and clothes right, and they're feeling good and refreshed and all that. I mean, they, a woman can really look, you know, really pretty when they want to. And, boy, when Fawn does that, she is really, really attractive. I do love those big, wide-set almond eyes and those full lips of hers and those high, angular cheekbones. I, man, I mean, to me, she's very, very pretty. 
almost too pretty. Almost. She's right on the edge of being too young and too pretty. Had a great, honest conversation with a good friend today about that. I go, you know, Fawn is like on the edge of being like, uh, kind of like really on the edge of being too young for me. And then my friend quickly nodded and agreed. And I was like, ooh. And, uh, but I said, you know, it's, she really likes having a father figure. And I, and I, I, you know, I, I didn't say a white knight complex, but I talked about how I kind of don't mind my end of it and all that. And, and she goes, yeah, I know it's a good fit. And it was kind of fun, a fun conversation. All right, that was it. That's my unofficial part three. Oh, hang on. I'll turn the camera on. You can see Good Paw and Ken. Hang on. And here we go. Ken Cam coming up. More Ken Cam bonus footage on the channel. Look at him. <laughs> Kun Paw thinks he's funny, too. <laughs> he goes running back. <laughs> Demok, Ken, Demok. I mean, it's like impossible not to like care for the little guy. He's he's got a lot of enthusiasm and a lot of heart. And uh, if I give him anything, he immediately wants to share it. Uh, and if he gets anything, he wants to give part to me. Oh, no. thank you for supporting my YouTube channel. Thank you very much.